This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And boy, I tell you, we've had one Rich Dad Radio Show after the other. And everybody is saying the same thing. A big effing crash is coming. But everybody has different points of view of what you should do. So, so far, this is number four of the uh, pre-crash Rich Dad radio program, and every one of them will give you a stunning, stunning insight as to what the future holds. Uh, just big reminder, Rich Dad does not make recommendations what to buy or sell, doesn't tell you what to do. We are a purely educational company, and uh, <clears throat> we encourage our guests to recommend what they recommend, but please, it doesn't mean that Rich Dad recommends anything. We're purely educational. And I think one of the things we do the best at is present the opposing point of view. Because as you all know, all coins have three sides, <coughs> heads, tails, and the edge. And we at Rich Dad like to stand at the edge and look at both sides. So the first, um, our guest today is Bert Dolman. He's the author of Prelude to a Meltdown and the Financial Apocalypse. He is the publisher of the Wellington Letter. I would say the most accurate forecasting letter on the market today. And if you want to make money, you should subscribe to the Wellington Letter. And if you don't want to lose money, you should definitely subscribe to the Wellington Letter. His last letter, with, by the way, this is August 2020. His last letter was so accurate. If I had watched it, I would have saved myself 150,000 bucks. But I didn't listen to Bert. So here he is on our program. And he's going to explain what he sees, how he sees it. But most importantly, what he thinks you should do. Again, this is August 2020. And every one of our guests has said the same thing. We're going to crash. It's going to be a big one. So Bert, my friend. Welcome to the Rich Dad Radio Show. Thank you very much. It's always very nice to be with you and speak with your listeners, and you have a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, that's evident. Yes. Yeah, and, yeah, and the most important so, thing, uh, let me, let me, Brett, I'm praising you right now. The reason I recommend your newsletter is because you're not a really, you're a technical guy, but you are a teacher. And as when you're explaining what's ha why markets are up and down, you're actually explaining some of the underlying reasons that go are behind the technical moves. So that's why, um, you know, your, your Wellington letter is exemplary. This last letter was so right on. It was frightening. So that's my, and how much is it? Let's type right there. Uh, I think it's, it was $69 a month. The auto charge. So every month you get charged 69. If you want to pay for a year ahead of time, yeah. I think it's uh, about around 590 and it comes out, uh, twice or three times a week, uh, a month, I'm sorry. And it's usually about uh, 20 pages thereabouts. It's the most thorough analysis that you will ever see in your life. When I speak at a conference, I sit, go in the exhibit area and I see other newsletters, I, I see these four pages and I say, oh my God, I could do that in 20 minutes. And uh, they're charging uh, about you know, less than we do, but you get a lot less. So we put a lot of effort into it. Um, you know, we've had the business now for 44 years. The Wellington Letter has won many awards of distinction. It has been publicized by Wall Street Journal, Barron's, et cetera. So, you know, we've got a long track record. And, you know, as they say, if it's lasted this long, it's got to be good. And then, by the way, as you know, Bert, uh, Bert and I are both from Hawaii. And his reputation was way ahead of him. I mean, everybody knew he was accurate. A lot of people didn't like what Bert was saying, but his forecasts are accurate. I will say that much. So please subscribe to the Wellington Letter. His website is domencapital.com, D-O-H-M-E-N, capital.com. And once again, Rich Dad is a neutral company. We listen to both sides. So Bert, um, you know, the, I'll start with something really goofy. What do you see? You know, we have this election coming up. The stock market is at an all time high. Is there anything that a politician can do to keep it up so there's no crash? Well, I, I think the current administration is doing everything possible 
uh, to keep uh, the economy up and the uh, uh, and the stock market, of course. Uh, but uh, you know, he's fighting uh, very strong forces on the other side that really want to demolish him. And uh, you know, we've been writing for uh, about that for the last three years. And in fact, three years ago, I wrote that ahead of the 2020 election, there will be a big stock market crash uh, to be followed by a recession slash, uh, slash depression in the economy. So far, that is right on target. And that was for a forecast made three years ago. Uh, I knew nothing about uh, the virus, of course, at that time. In fact, I said, I don't know what would cause it, uh, but it's going to be a manipulated crash. And uh, here we are. And uh, so, you know, going by, um, by the powers behind the scenes, that's what you want to look at. You know, I see these guys in the media always talking about earnings and dividends and all of this baloney. It has absolutely no relevance. They'll forget all those things and focus on uh, what is really important, and that is supply and demand uh, for stocks and for the stock market. And this is what we measure every day, money flow. That's the only thing that can change the price of an investment is supply and demand. It's that reason that seems so logical, but people always forget that. If there's more demand for a stock than there is supply, the price goes up. If there is more supply than, uh, than demand, the price goes down. And this is what you want to look at. That's what we measure all the time. And that's how we caught on February 23rd, which was a Sunday, we put out a special bulletin and said, the financial storm begins, you know, and started the next day. The next day was the start of that big historic crash, the worst crash in history, okay? Only lasted about four weeks, but it was horrendous, okay? So we, we got that, um, that message on that weekend. So now uh, when we came to the bottom of that. On March 21st, we said close out all short positions because we had beautiful profits on our shorts, and uh, there's going to be a big rally. The rally started the next trading day, March 23rd, and um, you know, people think it's still ongoing. It really isn't. Right now, we're seeing very similar signals to what we saw in early February. You know, they, they, they manipulate these five FANG stocks upward, and people think, oh, the market is booming, and then they have some other there's a stock that are well-known and they have big gains and so on. But the majority of stocks is what you want to look at. And this is what we teach people. How do you measure what the majority of stocks are doing? You know, there are many different ways to do that. What, uh, what, what was your last, again, this is August 2020. Your last newsletter was, it was so prescient. It was so far ahead, but so accurate. Quick, quick question. How do you do that? How do well, you, you know, a technical analysis really measures the money flows. That's all it does. And the change in money flows, that is what is important. Change is a delta. That is what's so important in the market. And over 44 years, this has really kept us on the right side. We have called every major decline in the stock market in 44 years using that type of analysis. And, you know, when money is suddenly going out, you have to measure it. The, the guys that are looking at earnings and dividends and so on, they will never find that out, okay? But we do it, and uh, one easy way is by looking at uh, the indices that are, that are not capitalization-weighted. For example, the S&P has an SCP uh, uh, equal-weighted index. So you want to look at that. You want to look at a very broad index, which we really like, and nobody ever talks about on TV, is the value line index. 1,660 stocks, unweighted. So every stock has equal importance. That's what you want to look at. You, know, you don't care if the stock you have in your portfolio has a billion shares outstanding or 10 billion shares. What difference does it make? But that's what cap weighted indexes do. Okay, so the value line weights yeah. each, each stock separately. Good, good. So, are you saying what causes these movements of cash flowing or money flowing? Is it the big houses changing positions? Is that is that what you're? It's not the little mom and pop movement. Uh -oh. These are big companies. No, it's always been the same for 
is it since the stock market started. It's always the, the big uh, insiders versus the public. It always is the same. And the way it traps are built, and I've been saying it for the last several weeks, is that a huge bull trap is once again being organized, just as it was in February. These are manipulations, you know? Nothing happens in the stock market by coincidence. And when, when something happens in a world, like an airplane crash or a threat in the war, or something like that, you say, oh, that's what made the stock market move. Yeah, maybe made the stock market move for a few hours, but has absolutely no significance long term. The big, uh, the big thing you want to look at is the money flows. Is money flowing in or money flowing out? And now we see money flowing out. We combine that with uh, the analysis of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, everybody talks about they put some four trillion, five trillion into the market, and that's what's moving the market. But nobody ever talks about that over the last nine weeks, the Federal Reserve has actually been taking money out of the system. Nobody talks about that. Here we again, we go with change. Delta, the Federal Reserve has changed policy. They're taking money out of the system. Money supply, same thing. Everybody talks about 20% growth in money supply, the biggest in decades, and so on and so on. But they don't talk about that in the last eight weeks. Money supply has actually gone down. You know, so these are the important things you want to look at. You, know, you want to look at what is now, not, not what an average of the last year. That's totally irrelevant. You want to catch it. When you go from Los Angeles to New York, you drive in a car. Do you have to know every turn on the road ahead of time? No. When you see there's a turn coming, that's when you take the turn. You don't have to forecast that turn. So, uh, so uh, Bert, given that we probably have no major uh, house insiders on this, on this radio show, and most of the people are the public. What would you say right now to mom and pop with a 401k? They're 55 years old, they're getting ready for retirement and they're maxed out in stocks in the stock market with mutual funds. They're maxed out, they're fully invested? Yeah, that's all they got. I, I mean, would they say got run, everything. run for the hills unless you wanna go broke. What was that? Run for the hills. You don't want to be fully invested right now. You want, you want to be out of this. You want to have safety for your money. When everybody's in, we have, we have now seen the greatest speculative environment the last uh, couple of months or four months. Since the dot-com bubble in 1999, early 2000, and that ended very, very painfully for the bulls. You know, it, it, this, this in many respects I call uh, option to put option ratios, et cetera, et cetera. This is as bad or, uh, or even worse than what we saw uh, ahead of that dot-com bubble top on March 10th, year 2000. And on March 10th, year 2000, we gave a signal and said, when the Federal Reserve assumes this attitude, it ends in a crash. And it did end in a crash, you know? So you have to look at the, what the Fed is doing. Not what they say, but what they're doing. Why are they pulling money out? Why? What is that? Say again. Why, why are they pulling money out? I thought they were trying to put money in. Oh, what they have. They've put in more than ever in the history of mankind. This is all artificial money. They know they overdid it in order to prevent the financial market meltdown. Really, we were on the precipice of and the implosion of the world's financial system. And so they had to do what they could do in order to save the global system. And now they say, okay, stock market is near an all time high, at least by some indices, not according to the indices that we watch, uh, but uh, speculation is rampant. People are taking the $600 a week uh, the money that they're getting from the government and they're speculating in the stock market and options. You know, when you take a look at the call options, it's just insane. These are people that have absolutely no idea what they're doing and they're buying call options, which is the most risky thing that you can ever do in the market. They have no idea what they're doing. Well, especially so at they're going to lose 100% of the money. Yeah, especially at the top. Hey, when we come back, we'll be talking more. Again, uh, we're talking to Bert Dolman, his old friend. Um, he's in Hawaii again. He's my neighbor there. 
Uh, when I was just starting out, he was infamous. He still is infamous. A lot of times people don't <laughs> like what he calls because most people are bullish and Brett will rise up when he's bearish and he's pretty accurate. So this, again, this is August, 2020. The reason I say that this world is changing so fast right now, you've got to know, you know, August, 2019 was completely different than August, 2020. So in his, in Bert is the publisher of the Wellington letter. His last letter was so accurate, sent chills up my spine. So when we come back, Bert, you know, I'm, I'm a big gold investor and then your thing said you warned and you warned me well that it was going to come down, but I got your letter a day too late. Anyway, with that said, the reason we have the rich dad radio show is we present different points of view. Uh, I was just on the phone with my friend, Peter Schiff, and he's saying, buy more gold. We had Harry Denton and he says, sell all the gold you got. So ladies and gentlemen, somewhere in between, <coughs> somebody's right. So when Bert comes back, he's gonna give us his point of view and his forecast on those of you who are like me, who are gold bugs. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on Rich Dad, uh, on iTunes or Android and YouTube. And please leave us a review whenever you can listen to. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. Again, we archive them because we're purely educational. We, we don't recommend you buy or sell anything. We just present different points of view so you can make up your own decision of what you're going to do. So listen to this program again at richdadradio.com. You'll go up twice as smart. But if you discuss this program with our friend Bert Doman, with friends, family, or business associates, you'll be 10 times smarter than 99% of the people out there, but that's not saying that much. And so uh, we've been talking to Bert Doman, but this, on the Rich Dad Radio program, I mean, this is why Rich Dad was created. You know, I'll, I won't get into why, but we could, you know, I said the biggest stock market crash was coming, and I called it in 2016. But I didn't, what I didn't see when I called it, and you can see me on Fox, I mean, on CNN with Wolf Blitzer calling the crash uh, of Lehman Brothers. But anyway, it's here now. And we've had David Stockman, who was Reagan's budget director, and I asked him what would Reagan do that Trump's not doing. We've had Chris Powell of GATA, which is the gold antitrust because the gold market and silver markets are completely manipulated by the big banks. He explains why you shouldn't touch gold and silver ETFs, but that's his point of view. And then we just had Harry Dent, and Harry Dent is calling for the biggest effing crash coming, and he says gold's gonna go down to a thousand bucks. Then my friend Peter Schiff and um, Jim Records are calling for it to keep going up. And today we have Bert Doman, who was the head of, and he's an old friend, not old, but he's a friend for years and years and years. He's Doman Capital Research, and his last Wellington letter, which I highly recommend everybody subscribe to. It'll make you money, but more importantly, save you money. And it's well-written, simple. It's educational. It's not technical. It's not just telling you buy this, buy that. Bert explains what's going on underneath what's going on. So it's Wellington letter, and Bert's going to talk about now, because the question I have for him is that, Again, this is August 2020 because things are changing so fast that everything may change tomorrow. So that's why we're hard on the date here. So we printed more money in the history of the world. And my question to Bert was, does it necessarily correlate that the more money printed, the bigger the crash? And so that's the question, Bert. Is, are, we ex are you expecting a biggest crash ever or something else? Well, it depends on how you measure the crash. Do we have a crash uh, in March of this year? It, it was the worst decline, four-week decline we ever saw in the stock market. Uh, so I would call it a crash. Some people might say, no, it's just a four-week correction. You know, uh, so it uh, depends on your definition. Everything always depends on definition. People really have to think more before they ask a question. Uh, because... Many times, I will, Bert, what, should I buy gold? You know, and my answer to that is, well, what is your time horizon? Is it two days, two weeks, two months, or twenty years? You know, it depends very much what your time horizon is, because most people don't define that, and therefore never know if what they buy is a short-term trade or a long-term hold. 
And if you don't know that, you really don't know what you should do with your position. You know, so basically about the the Fed, you know, yes, they have put a record amount of money. Nobody ever thought uh, the Fed would do what they've done, and some of the things uh, are really uh, totally prohibited by their charter. Like uh, they formed these special purpose vehicles with the U.S. Treasury in order for the Fed to be able to buy ETFs that invest in bonds and junk bonds. So the the Fed right now owns junk bonds, which they're really not allowed to do because they have market risk, okay? But they did it anyway to support the junk bond market because if that implodes, then, you know, you have a systemic risk. So um, a lot of things are being done. In Japan right now, uh, the Bank of Japan, they're running out of ammunition. They've tried negative interest rates. Uh, the, the Bank of Japan now owns about 80% of all listed stocks in Japan via the ETS that they have bought. It's incredible. I mean, basically, they've nationalized the stock market. But they're doing this to keep things glued together. And the Federal Reserve can keep things glued together. Whenever everything starts to crumble, as it did in March, they can roll out these unprecedented measures and keep things together. And that's why I say, you know, a crash, I would define as now what I'm looking for is a long-term crash, basically, uh, that's going to keep on going down, interrupted by the very strong rallies that gets everybody bullish again. The manipulator rallies, they have the high-frequency traders, the algo traders working together. And, you know, most people don't realize uh, anymore that there's something called the PPT. Everybody that's been in markets for a long time knows that. The Plunge Protection Team. This was called into being in 1988 after the 87 crash, signed into law by President Reagan. And it uh, actually formed a team between the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve to intervene in the stock market to support stocks. The mission is to uh, preserve orderly markets. That's what it says. In my opinion, there's the mission creep, and they're actually been inflating stocks upward. And so it, they can do this. You know, at critical times, sometimes market forces overwhelm them, as they did in March and so on. But then finally things are right. They can then turn the market around. So we have to always remember this market is totally manipulated. Okay. So therefore, all of these metrics, earnings and dividends and all this baloney and the beautiful gadgets that somebody makes, they're irrelevant, totally irrelevant. So um, what's your short term? I mean, during the break where we're talking about much hinges upon this coming election between you know, Trump and Biden and things like this. So how does that affect yeah. your vision of the future? Well, Okay, everything goes in cycles. We have now had a four-month rally on the stock market, and uh, stocks have gone to insane levels. They're a discounting what could be the next five or ten years of uh, growth in the economy, and it's in today's prices. When, when prices get that high, I go the other way, okay? So this cannot last. Uh, I can give you many, many reasons why this is absolutely insane, but the markets go insane at times as they did in early uh, 2000 as well, you know? And uh, that's uh, when you want to be out of the market or you want to start looking at short sales in order to make a lot of money. So uh, this is a danger period. The election is ahead. In my opinion, it's going to be battle between uh, the White House forces with their PPT to keep the stock market supportive. And then, of course, the other side that want to have Trump lose the election. And uh, it's going to be close, and it's going to cause a lot of volatility. If um, one side wins, uh, like um, the, the the person who's uh, who just picked his running mate, if they win, I think the stock market could have a serious, serious. So if Biden crash. and and Harris get elected, you think that's going to be a crash? Correction. Yeah, because they have all the wrong policies. You know, what are the wrong the policies in your mind? Center. Pardon? What are the wrong policies in their in your mind? Oh, everything. You, everything that they have proposed is totally wrong. Uh, Trump actually 
uh, got the U.S. economy out of an eight-year slump uh, that was produced by the wrong policies in the White House. He came in and he reversed everything. They reduced regulations in the U.S. by 50 percent. Um, they cut tax, they cut capital gifts, and all of these things. All the right policies for the economy. He's a businessman, okay? He's not a politician. What you want to do is always keep the politicians out of politics. <laughs> <laughs> that's difficult, too. Because politicians, you know, they're about the worst ones. The politicians, by the way, right now are making our health care policies. They're forcing us to wear masks. They <laughs> read yesterday in one state, in fact, and they now have to wear masks on Zoom video conferences. Can you imagine you're sitting in front of your computer and you have to wear a mask? Because I know, I guess they think the COVID virus can go uh, through the airwaves of Zoom. <laughs> I don't know. But it, this is how ridiculous things have become. So right now, if you're looking at investments, you want to be out of the way of danger, okay? You want to, capital preservation is now key. We've had the four-month rally. Now you want to preserve capital. If you were lucky enough to get in at the bottom when we said close out all short positions, there's going to be a good rally, then you want to get out. The actual top in the indices that really count was on June 8th. That, that was the top of the rally. And uh, you know most people don't look at charts, but look at the chart of the value line, V-A-L-U-G. And you will see these tops on June 8th. That was the top. So we have gone now two months without any progress in these. The only uh, progress you've seen is in a tech-laden NASDAQ index, and which is highly manipulated. It's basically five stocks that move that index, okay? I don't want to see what five stocks are doing. I want to see what 2,000 stocks are doing, okay? So uh, this is the thing right now. You want to go to safety. We have a program called Hedge Folios, uh, and uh, this is not a managed account. We give you model portfolios, different ones, conservative, global, conservative, uh, et cetera. It's, uh, we use ETFs, not stocks. And you should see the outperformance that we have. Like, uh, uh, I think the, uh, after the crash, we, uh, the portfolios were up about 40%, uh, and the, um, the indexes were down about 30 you know, so, so it's a so, huge outperformance. So, so Bert, that hedge folios is a service of Domain Capital. Yeah, well, we actually uh, formed a different company for that right. uh, Domain Strategies. Good, but uh, the URL is uh, the website yeah. hedgefolios.com. Okay, so what's your fork? Because in your your last Wellington letter, again, this is August twenty twenty. You were you were precise on the correction in the gold market. So, what's your you have any forecasts on gold and silver? Yeah, we, we put out a gold report. In fact, people can get it free. Uh, it was uh, about a week ago. And uh, just go to our website, domancapital.com, and you can get a free, that gold report. We're very bullish. In, um, in 1980, we actually gave a forecast, a very long-term forecast, based on extensive research of long-term cycles. And uh, with, uh, this is when gold was around uh, $700, or something like that. And we said, we're going to go into a 20-year bear market in gold right now. And people thought that was insane because everybody was looking for $3,000. Well, that's why everybody hated you in Hawaii, Burke. 1980. <laughs> Pardon? I was one of those guys. That, how, how can they be saying that? Yeah. Because I was really yeah. bullish on so, gold. It, of course, I was selling at eight, yeah. so I was happy. But anyway, I just yeah. said, I don't, how can it, you be saying that about gold? But anyway, yeah. that's how yeah. accurate you are. That was and, a long and, time you ago. Know, at the same time, I said, but what's really interesting is the cycle thing called for a 30-year bull market. And I, even though I said, I have no idea what would cause a 30-year bull market in gold. So what happened? 20 years later, exactly 20, year, 20 years later, it was astonishing to us even because cycles move a little bit to the left or to the right. But this one was right on 2001 was the bottom in, in gold, and 2002 was the start of the next bull market. Right. So now we've had a 20-year bull market again in gold. It just hit a new high last week. Uh, and a new high like that is going to have a lot of resistance, a lot of sellers. And so now we say, yes, uh, the secular bull market is probably still intact. That means another 10 years to the upside. But 
we got to have a juicy, juicy uh, correction. Correction. And people forget 2011. You know, gold mining stocks in 2011 went down about 80 percent, as measured by the uh, ETF for the gold miners. 80 percent from 2011. Everybody was so bullish. N- nobody thought that gold could go down. Stocks lost 80 percent of their value. Now, I ask you, if you if you think you're a long-term investor. Could you stay invested with an 80% decline in your mining stocks? I don't think so. Yeah. In fact, there was, uh, there was one major hedge fund manager. He had a gold fund, and he lost about 90%. Yeah. So uh, the, the gold corrections, you, know, you said it before, that the gold and silver markets are highly manipulated. You know? And when everybody has record bullish sentiment, as we saw over the last month, you know, the, the insights, the manipulators take advantage of that. They sell into it, uh, and they sell short in order to make money. Okay, so hey, Bert, technically, Bert, Bert, the, downside, Bert. The, hey, Bert. the downside for us is about a $500 decline in gold. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say minimum. one thing. You guys had better subscribe to Bert's letter, the well the letter, because what he's covering here, he's covering in every one of his issues. The most important thing, he keeps it simple, and there's pictures with charts, but you can't see the charts now. So that's why the Wellington letter is priceless. I mean, I, I was sitting there shocked at how accurate your last, because it's August 2020, you're so precise. You know, I thought you were the guy manipulating the market. But anyway, again, tell us how much does that letter cost and what, what are the services does Doman Capital right, um, sell? Doman, Doman Capital, it's, uh, yeah, $69 a month, uh, and that's an auto charge, so you get you get with uh, $69 from Plan. It's, it's really, I mean, we work at this. I personally, and then of course, the people in the office work on it as well, but I work on the market. Right now, I got it down to about 12 hours a day. I used to work about 14, 15, but I'm getting, getting older. And so 12 hours a day, and I don't consider it work. You know, there's an old saying if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. I love what I do. And it's so great when you've got it figured out finally, you know, after all of this work, you say, ah, I got it. I got it figured out. I know what's going to happen. Okay, okay, okay. You, know, it, you don't, you Bert, don't, that's not a knee jerk reaction. Bert, I want people to buy your letter. That's all, that's all we need to say. You're, you're, yeah. you're incredibly, yeah. you're, you're getting better. You're like a fine red wine, getting a little bit better every day. <laughs> but, but this is my question because I've been wanting to ask you this and you skirted it about two sessions ago. The question is, what do you think of COVID? What do I think of what? The, the pandemic, because you said something, you said, I can't tell you. Oh, oh, COVID. You told me COVID. you couldn't tell me. Yeah. And I, I'm ever since then, I said, well, you, you should tell me. What What do you think of it? Well, uh, the COVID, I wrote this in January when nobody really thought it would be a big thing. And uh, I had read the foreign press because the, the U.S. press is done for. We don't have a free press. We don't have investigative reporters anymore. You know, they just blah, blah, blah. It's propaganda. It's propaganda from A to Z. And so you have to start reading the foreign press. And I, I came across a very scientific article about the virus. And they had sequenced the genome of that virus. And they found out that it had an insert a man-made insert in the genome of an HIV virus. And I said, wow, it's man-made. It's made in the laboratory. So that's how we knew it was made in the laboratory. Then you, then, then you have to think, who would do this and for what purpose? You know? Then you investigate a little bit further. Then you found out that the U.S. government, NIH, National Institute of Health, actually sent $3.75 million to the Wuhan virus lab that manufactured this apparently, and a few years ago, you said, why are we financing the Wuhan virus lab? You know, that's a bio lab uh, for the military. And so, you know, all of us started coming together. I said, well, this is how they're going to crash the market. You know, three years ago, when I forecasted a crash ahead of the election, I didn't know what would cause it. Now we knew. He said, that must be it. So, Bert. You know, a manufactured virus. Bert, so let me, let me just ask you this question, because we had, you know who Stockman is, right? Reagan's budget director? 
Yeah. And I asked him at the end of the program, I said, what would Trump do? And you guys should listen to the interview with David Stockman. It's fantastic. It is funny, hysterical, yeah. and frightening. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I said, what would Trump do? Uh, what, what would Reagan do that Trump would not do? Without hesitation, David Stockman, who has a theology degree from Harvard, said he would, Reagan would have fired Fauci immediately. Now. Oh, absolutely. I've read him that. What, so, you know, I watched Trump sit up there on the stage and this little Fauci, I call him the fascist Fauci. He sits there and Trump doesn't dare touch him. That's kind of spooks yeah. me. And then what uh, Stockman calls Kerchief later, Kerchief woman, you know, Dr. Burks, B-I-R-X. Yeah, Fauci and yeah. Burks. Yeah. And Trump just stands away from them. Do you think they have something yeah. on him or power or what? what's going on? You know, uh, I've asked that uh, same question to myself, and I think it's the following. They are very popular in the media. They know that if he fired them, uh, he would expose himself to just a barrage of criticism from the left side saying he fired them because they don't, they don't want to go along with, uh, with uh, Trump's theories about the virus. And so he said, let them be on the media, let them destroy themselves. And Fauci is destroying himself with all of this fake stuff. In January, he said, you don't need masks. You can go to the Super Bowl, no problem. You know? Then he reverses himself. Oh, no mass gatherings you know, allowed. You've got to wear, wear a mask. Even when you're in your home and you're sitting on the toilet, you've got, you got to have a mask. You know? But you know, I think they're destroying themselves. And I think that Trump probably said, you know, uh, leave it alone. They will destroy that. And right now I see it on Twitter. People hate this guy. You know, I call him the fake Fauci, you know, and uh, that's what he is. And you, you have a good book out called fake. You should really publicize that more. <laughs> you know, it, it, everything is fake nowadays. Well, that, so anyway, uh, I, I just can't, the, the, the last thing that Fauci said was you should have a mask when you're having sex. I said, well, some of my girlfriends, I should have had a mask on, but anyway, <laughs> that's, that's, I can't say that anymore. But anyway, Bert, you know, I, I really want to come. Yeah, I, wonder, I want, Hey, you I, know, Bob, I wonder if social distancing applies to the bedroom. Well, it depends on who you're with, <laughs> but anyway, what, what he was saying, he was recommending young kids have masks on when they're having sex with their girlfriends and going, that might be a good idea. But anyway, I want to really commend you. Your last Wellington letter was so spot on. It's your best ever. So you are getting better with age, my friend. Well, thank you very much, brother. That's a great compliment coming from you because you, you see so much. You know? Well, I wish I had read your letter two days earlier. You, how come it was late? Yeah. You know, the goal, <laughs> the goal to try, we're saying this, you know, I've been saying it for two weeks. This is going to end in a huge plunge ah! that's going to lock everyone in at the top. And, you know, and it, then the huge plunge came 100, down $120 in one day. Yeah. So everyone is right now locked into gold. And people will be waiting forever for rallies so they can, you know, yeah. the typical That's thing. me. Get out even. Well, no, you don't get out even. They won't let you get out nah. even. You're going to get out at a big loss at the bottom. Well, that's you, you sound like my friend Harry Dent right now, but I'm going to talk to uh, <laughs> my friend Peter Schiff because he's got a different point of view. But anyway, uh, Bert. Yeah, I, I know, Peter. Yeah, yeah well, it's, 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 it's almost entertainment, financial newsletter stuff. But anyway, I thank you. I, I'm a, I want to ask everybody, please get a copy. Subscribe to the Wellington Letter. It's Doman Capital Research, website domencapital.com, D-O-H-M-E-N-C-A-P-I-T-E-L.com. Thank you very much, Bert. You're always a wealth of information well, and insight. And congratulations on all your years you. and years and years yeah. of doing what you love. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. It's really a great opportunity. I love speaking to your listeners because they give us just such a good feedback, you know, and that's really nice. Yeah. And uh, you have a fantastic audience, and I congratulate all of your listeners, you know, and I hope you stay safe. Uh, and COVID, uh, be that as it may, I don't think it's any worse than the flu. But uh, 
uh, but stay safe in the markets. Don't get gobbled up by all of this euphoria you see on TV. In fact, I, I wrote that in the last Wellington. I said, this is a good time to hit that mute button on your TV. You. That's what it's for. At market taps, you want to hit mute and not listen to all this bullish talk. Okay. Okay. Bob, all the best. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you all. When okay. we come back, back, I'll be having a short discussion with Sarah here to figure out what, uh, just to summarize this fantastic interview with Bert Doman. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Once again, listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anywhere on iTunes or, or Android and YouTube. And please leave us a comment whenever you listen. All of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them because we make no recommendations. We don't sell stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, gold, or silver. But we're pretty controversial. <clears throat> so we're purely educational. Listen to this program again. We only bring on people we believe are sincerely credible. And uh, you'll find that all of our guests don't agree. So listen to this podcast again, and you'll learn twice as much. But most importantly, discuss this, listen, have your friends, family, and business associates listen to it and discuss it, and you'll find your financial intelligence go through the roof. So, and if you have a question, use hashtag AskRichDad on social media, and we'll be look at answer the question. But the kind of the interesting news is uh, we've had the tri we've had four guests on David Stockman, Reagan, Reagan's budget director. We've had Chris Powell, head of GATA, who talks about how gold and silver are suppressed in price. Then we've had Harry Dent, who's calling for gold to go to 1,000. And then we've had Bert Doman, who publishes the Wellington Letter. They're all saying the same thing. We're going for a crash. The difference is, what do you do? Do you know if, and so just for your entertainment, because we trashed, my friend Peter, we don't trash him, we tease him. So I, I kind of lean more in the, in the camp of Peter Schiff and um, Jim Records, saying gold is gonna go up, and Harry's calling for 1,000. So I, we just had Harry on the phone. I mean, uh, Peter on the phone, he says, well, that's an improvement because Harry's been calling for gold to go to 400, 1,000's an increase, but I'm gonna tell you why it's gonna go to 3,000. So Sarah has just booked Peter Schiff, I can confuse all these names. So Peter Schiff will be on next week sometime, and he's going to tell us why gold's going to go to 3,000, and Harry's calling for 1,000. I'll never have a debate between the two because there'll just be yelling and screaming going on. But anyway, that's what makes Rich Dad Radio entertaining and for you as a listener to decide what's best for you. So Sarah, what did you think about, what did you think about all this? Well, you always say that you make, you know, you love crashes because you make the most money. Yeah. I say I love crashes because I book the best guests. Yeah. Because every, and I'm telling you, none of these guests I reached out to, they all came to us and said, now's the time to get on. I've got to get on the show. I've got to get on the show because I think we said it, you know, in a previous interview, something's, ha you can feel it in there. Something's yeah. happening. And I think each one of our guests have provided a different perspective they're all great analysts and they do their research. And so um, I like the fact that we can present them all and then our listeners can take action that best suits them. But yeah. I love the different perspectives. Um, and I'm looking forward to this Peter Schiff interview because I have listened to him in the past and he's, you know, a great guy and his, his opposition to Harry, that'll make an interesting. Yeah. You don't want them two on this. I've seen them both at the same time. It's, it's not, it's, <laughs> It's called a cat fight yeah. anyway. But anyway, it's kind of interesting times, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, again, we have a huge lineup coming out. Right? Stockman. What do you think of Stockman? Stockman, I've told everybody I know it's my favorite interview we've ever done. And we've interviewed some awesome, right. great people. I mean, all of our guests are great. They're so generous and kind and willing to, to educate. Smart. Smart. He's funny. Like, <laughs> you know, for a... a academic harvard theologist yeah, theology. congressman he's hilarious budget director for the reagan administration i mean if you just lay his resume out he sounds like the most boring person on the face of the earth but he is hilarious he has a great perspective on what's happening in this pandemic and i'm really looking forward to everybody you know to hearing that that episode um my you know my greatest joke coming out of that one is you know what would 
what would Reagan do in his first, he'd fire Fauci. Without hesitation. That, oh, it just spit out like that. And then um, I will back it up and say we interviewed Jack Bergman a couple weeks ago. Uh, my friend, the general. Oh, my gosh. Congressman. I, my, best, my best joke out of that episode is, uh, you know, Trump and Biden know exactly where they stand on politics. They, they are who they are. The difference is somebody has to tell Biden where he's standing. <laughs> I listen because I just re listen. We just published that show yesterday. I oh my gosh, it cracks me up every time I hear it. So I can, I hope I can't wait for a Trump Biden debate. Oh, oh that'll that'll be a dog fight. We ever saw one. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So yeah, in, great times, interesting times. I just hope our listeners heed the warnings and know something's happening. Just choose. Just choose who you're who you're learning That's best from. for you. Mm -hmm. And then what about Chris Powell the thing of the manipulation of gold? I mean, well, that's big business. Something that I find interesting when we did that interview, he talked about the Act of 1934. I don't have it in front of me. I forget what it was right. called, but it was where it was legal for the government to manipulate the prices. Kim wrote it down. I noticed that she wrote that down. She said she had never heard it before. They this is what they don't teach in school. Right. And that was alarming to me. That stood out to me the rest of the interview because it's legal. It's been accepted for 90 years. I mean, that's scary. And I think most people don't know that bit of information. It's 100% manipulated. Mm -hmm. And then we have Harry Dent who was talking about 90 years. What'd you learn from Harry this time? Harry, Harry, the greatest bubble burst. He said the greatest bubble burst ever is coming. Um, he... He, I love his 90 year cycle um, yeah. that he talks about. It's so true. It's so dead on. Can, can I tell you something, though, Sarah? I, I hear all this stuff and I still do what I'm going to do anyway. <laughs> I mean, that's what's so stupid about me. <laughs> You've been talking to Harry now for how many years? years. You, <laughs> he's been telling you the same stuff over and, and over. And, and Bert, I've known for like 40 years. Yeah. And I still don't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> So I in that interview with Harry Dent with Stan Harley, and I think my favorite thing was his employ, unemployment pattern, yep. how when unemployment's at an all-time low, the stock market's at an all-time high, and that's what we're in right now. Or I'm sorry, the stock market will see its all-time high five to seven months after. Yeah, it's, those guys are so unbelievable. So good. They're so, so unbelievable good. in their forecasting. One more thing about Chris Powell. For those of you who wonder, should I buy gold or silver ETFs, and those guys like me who are hard we take only delivery of gold and silver. I think that's an important part to listen to is because gold and silver ETFs are 100% manipulated. Right, right. And that's his biggest warning. He said, if you don't, if you can't physically hold it in your hand, you own nothing. Yeah, but that's but because we're physical guys. Yeah. Whereas paper guys, they like the paper. Yep. It's, everybody's got a point of view. Mm -hmm. And then we had Bert, who's... I didn't have to yell at him this no, time. No, <laughs> you were so well behaved. I was shocked. I was with our last day. Bert, Bert, Bert. Uh, you know, we got so many comments on YouTube. <laughs> They're like, Robert, we, you know, he knows his name or, you know, some of them were pretty funny. But I thought, I thought it was great. I thought this interview was great. Um, he, his Wellington letter, like you said throughout the show, so good, so smart, right on the money. So precise. Oh, so for $69 a month, I get it. You know, it, it, that for a lot of people is a lot of money, but it can save you a lot of money. And make you, so, it will save me about 150000 bucks. And we make, just to be clear, Rich Dad doesn't make any money no, on, on no. that sale of that newsletter. So no. we have nothing in it, whether you buy it or not. But I think it, it's in everybody's best interest to, this is, financial education is more important now than ever before. And for $69 ever. a month, come on. And. He is a, he is a, Bert's a teacher. Mm -hmm. I subscribe to other newsletters. They're boring, but Bert explains them, the psychology and the momentum behind these moves up and down. So he's a, he's a great teacher. And I like that Bert in his letters, he talks about how it relates to current events. You know, so you can see, like he talks about the election, right? Whatever happens in the election. So we all, we live through election ads and, you know, all of this crap, the media crap. So he relates what we're seeing happening in the markets with what's going on in current events, and I think that's what makes the letter so interesting. It's very easy to read. So. so the final word is this, you know, like um, if Bert, well, Bert was correct. I, I, I took about $150,000 hit on gold. And some of you go, well, that's a lot of money, and it is. 
But I've been in this market, as I said earlier, I started buying gold in 73 and silver in 1964. And I've seen this thing go up and down. I've started a gold mine, I've started a silver mine. You know, Kim and I bought our house with silver and all this stuff. So the question is, how do you handle a $150,000 loss? And this is the difference, you know. There's a saying that says, no pain, no gain. So when I take a punch in the gut like that, not that it doesn't affect my wealth at all. I mean, nothing, because I have so much of it, gold and silver. But it's still painful. It's still a shock to the gut. But all it does, that's why I'm talking to Sarah now. I said, Sarah, we've got to make more money. <laughs> so all I'm saying to you is this, as an entrepreneur, when you lose money, it's not, oh, somebody cheated me or I'm a victim or I got to blame somebody for, I got to blame somebody. No, it's just a punch in the gut and you say, okay, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to come back at it. So Sarah and I got to figure out how to make more money. <laughs> Right. Well, I thought it was when we were talking about the Bert Doman episode, you and I were texting and you said, I got to get Bert Doman on. And I said, yeah, his last letter or something. And you said, yeah, I should have read it yesterday. <laughs> that son <laughs> so of a I bitch. Think, where, think, where was the mail? Right. I where think was that email? to your point, you know, don't wait around. You can't wait around for things to happen. You've got to be proactive, educate yeah, yourself. Sometimes and you it's something, if you lose, you lose, but you learn and you move on. Yeah. Don't blame somebody for your stupid. You know, that's what life is. Sometimes, you know, I don't understand. Everybody gets a trophy, BS. Where the hell did that come from? You know, when you lose, it should inspire you to stand back up. Like, I'm a big fan of Eckhart Tolle. You know I mean? He's the New Earth and or what, the Rude Awakening, whatever he writes about. But he talks about when you take something that bad, it's like your crucifixion. And then when you take it in the gut, you go, oh, my God. And you, 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 things happen to you, mm -hmm. make mistakes. Bad things happen, good things happen. But the, after the crucifixion comes the resurrection. So now I'm already on it. I said, okay, I should have listened to Bert, yada, yada, yada. We're taking a couple of hits. Let's say, let's say it's a $500,000 hit. That's still a lot of money, but it's going to make me richer. Do you know what I mean? Because now I'm on Sarah about how do we make more money. <laughs> well, and now I can just buy more gold. <laughs> yeah, I can buy more gold. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're at the Rich Dad Company. We're not here. We're not college professors. And we think making mistakes is one of the best ways to learn. So I want to thank you all for being supporters of the Rich Dad Radio Program. Trust you'll learn something. But most important, keep getting educated and make up your own mind what's best for you. Thank you for listening to Rich Dad Radio.